Welcome to our lecture online. The next problem on the 2021 JE Advanced Test, uh, Section 2 or Part 2 or Paper 2 as they call it, um, involves the very same problems we did on the previous video but with a different question. Now they're looking for the ratio of Q divided by R times T0. There should be a little zero there, or T sub naught. All right, let's read the problem again to refamiliarize ourselves. A thermally insulating cylinder has a thermally insulating and frictionless movable partition in the middle. On each side of the partition, there is a one mole of an ideal gas with specific heat at constant volume, C sub V equals 2R, where R is the gas constant. Initially, each side vol is volume V naught and temperature T naught, initial volume, initial temperature. The left side has an electric heater transferring heat Q slowly to the left side. As a result, the partition moves slowly to the right, reducing the volume on the right to the half of the initial volume. Consequently, the gas temperature on the left and on the right become TL and TR. The value of Q divided by R T sub naught is, and of course remember that in the previous problem we already determined the ratio of T on the right side, the final temperature on the right side, divided by the initial temperature. It was equal to the square root of 2. Now they give us four possible answers, A, B, C, and D, for that particular ratio, and only one of those is correct. Again, you need to know the equations associated with the adiabatic side. So we have P1 V1 to the gamma equals P2 V2 to the gamma, and we have T1 V1 to the gamma minus 1 equals T2 V2 to the gamma minus 1, and of course, we have to realize that gamma is equal to the ratio of C sub P over C sub V, which we knew was going to be 3R over 2R, which is equal to 3 over 2. Another equation we're probably going to need is this, that we know for the ideal gas equation that PV equals to NRT. And since all three, P, V, and T, are all changing, we can say that P over V, uh, PV over T equals NR equals a constant, we can then conclude that P1 V1 over T1 must equal P2 V2 over T2. Now, how do we figure out what Q is equal to? Because essentially that's what we're trying to do. R is a constant, T sub naught is a constant, so we need to find the value for Q. Q is the amount of heat that's added to the left side, which in part pushes the piston to the right, which means that the gas on the left does work on the right, so any change in the energy, or all the energy absorbed by the left side and the right side, must equal the Q contributed to the left side. So essentially we can say that Q is equal to the change in internal energy on the left side, plus the change in internal energy on the right side, because essentially the heat can't go anywhere, there's work being done, but temperature on both sides is going to go up due to increase in pressure, change in volume, and so forth. So essentially Q is going to be this. And remember that the equation for delta U is equal to N C sub V times delta T. In other words, what we need to do is we need to find the change in temperature for the left side and the change in temperature for the right side. Now for the right side, we already have that because we know that T on the right is equal to the square root of 2 times T initial. So this is already known. So all we need to know now is T on the left side. To do that, of course, we must know the pressure change and the volume change. Now the volume change we know. We know that V final on the left side is equal to 3 halves the initial volume because half the volume is initially taken away from the right side and added to the left side. So we already know the change in the volume but we don't know the change in the pressure. Because of the piston in the middle, we know that the pressure on the right side must equal to the pressure on the left side. And since we already know the change in the temperature and the change in the volume, we should be able to figure out the change in the pressure using this equation. So we're going to work with the right side. And we can then say that pressure 2 equals pressure 1. And then we can write V1 T2 as the T2 goes over here. And on the denominator, 
we're going to have T1 and V2. All right, so now we're able to plug everything in there. So we can say that pressure on the right side is going to be the initial pressure times V1, that's initial volume, T2, that's the final temperature, which is the square root of 2 times the initial temperature, divided by T1, which is initial temperature, and V2 on the right side is going to be half of the original volume. Notice that the V's cancel, the T's cancel, and we're left with P on the right is equal to, when you bring this to the top, 2 times the square root of 2 times P initial. And of course, we know that must equal to P on the left side because the pressure must be the same between the two chambers. Now that we also know the pressure on the left side, we can again use this equation to find temperature on the left side, the final temperature. So now we're going to use that equation here. So we write T2 is equal to T1 times P2 V2 over P1 V1. Did I do that right, T2? Yes. So I move this down, I move this up. Yes, that's all there. And of course, this is now for the left side. Okay, T1 is T initial. P2 is, P2 is the same as on the right side, so it would be 2 times the square root of 2 times P initial. V2 is going to be 3 over 2 V initial divided by P initial, V initial. And notice that the uh, P initials cancel out, the V initial cancel out, the 2's cancel out, and so we end up with equal to 3 times the square root of 2 times T initial. So now we know T on the left side, the final temperature, in terms of the initial temperature. Finally, we can calculate the change in internal energy. So let me see here, do I have enough room? I'll come over here, otherwise it gets too crowded. So for the right side, we have the change in internal energy is equal to the number of moles, which is 1, C sub V, which is 2R, that's given, and the change in the temperature is the final temperature. Now this is the right side, so the final temperature, which is the square root of 2 T sub naught, um, minus T sub naught, like this. Whoop, I should make it a square bracket. And we can factor out an R and a T sub naught. So delta U on the right side, I'll call it sub R, is equal to R T sub naught times 2 times this, which is 2 times the square root of 2 minus 2. All right, we do the same for the left side. So the delta U on the left is equal to 1 mole times C sub V, which is 2R, times the change in the temperature. Now, this is the final temperature, so that gives us 3 times the square root of 2 T sub naught minus T sub naught. And pulling out an R and a T sub naught, so this is equal to R times T sub naught times 6 times the square root of 2 minus 2. Now, we realize that Q is simply the sum of those two, so now we simply have to add them together. So, that means that Q, which is equal to delta U on the left plus delta U on the right, which is equal to, I'll go over here, we can factor out an R T sub naught times, on the left side we have 6 times the square root of 2 minus 2 plus, on the right side we have 2 times the square root of 2 minus 2, which is equal to R T sub naught times 8 times the square root of 2 minus 4, and then when I factor out a 4, I get R T sub naught times 4 times 2 times the square root of 2 minus 1. Now notice that I'm going to take Q and divide it by R T sub naught, which leaves me with this ratio. So in other words, Q divided by R T sub naught will be equal to 4 times 2 times the square root of 2 minus 1. And which of the four possible answers is equal to that? And notice it is answer B. Wow, that's a lot of work to get to the answer. But the really, as I can tell, is really no shortcut. You do have to first figure out the temperature on the left, 
which because of that you need to figure out the pressure on the left which is equal to the pressure on the right you know that they're going to be equal so you find the pressure once you find the pressure on the right side you know the pressure on the left side it's the same then you find the temperature on the left side once you have the temperature you calculate the change in internal energy for the left and the right you add them together that's the total heat added and then you could factor out and get that particular ratio you'll be hard pressed to get this done in the three minutes allotted but there it is that is how it's done